We are live. All right. So, hello and welcome to the Keeping Data Science Broad Webinar 3. I'm Renata Rawlings-Goss, the co-executive director for the South Big Data Innovation Hub, as well as the chair for our Data Science Education and Workforce Working Group and the PI for this series, Data Science Broad. Today, we will be discussing the series as a whole, which has consisted of six months of community input, three webinars, as well as a in-person workshop and a report, which will be uh, released today immediately following the webinar. So the links will be in the video notes. In addition, there's been so much enthusiasm and support for the series that we have a fantastic lineup of panelists today to talk about next steps. Uh, as well as potential projects that people can get involved in nationally, as well as internationally, um, directly, and to continue this effort. So we've started, we will also start a collaborative document to note these projects and others that may come in and people's interest in participating. Um, also, we'll be at the southbaydatahub.org which is our website, and uh, a lot of the information will be linked in the video notes for this web webinar after the webinar has concluded. So first, uh, I will discuss a little bit about the series as well. So Keeping Data Science Broad also has included negotiating the digital and data divide. Uh, a little about the South Big Data Hub. There are four hubs for the nation uh, that are dedicated to the mission of advancing uh, projects that include industry, academia, and government, as well as nonprofit partners around data science and big data. The South Hub is 16 states, from Delaware to Texas, and we have eight different uh, theme areas, uh, as well as working groups. So this falls under our education and workforce. The first webinar in this series was looking at data science and education uh, from a traditional context, meaning in programs that currently have data science um, uh, in their institution. And this series, Keeping Data Science Broad has been focused on four-year colleges, community colleges, minority-serving institutions such as HBCUs, Hispanic-serving institutions, and others, um, and bringing them into the conversation around how to design programs for those institution types as well. The second webinar in this series was around alternative avenues for development of data science education which included uh, looking at museums, as well as programs and boot camps, data science for social good, also incorporating data science into non-STEM programs, such as arts and humanities classes and mentorship programs. Both of these are available on our YouTube channel as well, um, and we'll be linked to this one in a playlist. Next, we had a workshop this November for bridging the data divide that brought in over 60 participants, again, from community colleges, uh, four-year institutions, minority-serving institutions, government industry, and R1. And we really spent time looking at what are the challenges in producing these programs, as well as the opportunities and the vision for the future. So from that work, there were 29 white papers that came out of it, and top 10 asks, and some concrete next steps which we uh, then looked at the mix that was here to try and get a truly representative or close to representative sampling of the different institution types we were trying to um, convey and trying to uh, assess what is going on in those different um, organizations. So we spent time at the workshop clustering these challenges and visions into the areas you see below and finding common areas. So then there was a core group that went back and created a report where we looked at all 29 areas uh, and came up with these eight that really represented all of them and put them into the report, which will be coming at the uh, end of today. So there's been a lot of different effort and 
and people who have been involved in it. And so we're hoping that you will download, look at it, give your comments and use it in, in any way you see fit as people use it. We do. I would love to see that the collaborative document people put how they might be using the report as well as uh, projects that you may be interested in doing or participating in. This, as I said, was under our education and workforce working group through the South Hub. And there's a number of other activities that happen as a part of that, including the surveying the education landscape, faculty training and grants, student development, uh, we sponsored data science for social good programs, as well as training workshops um, and connection with uh, different types of institutions and industry. So for the South Hub, the next step in this series, this is the last webinar, but we're launching a program today, uh, which is called Data Up, uh, where you can apply to bring data science to your campus. This is a hands-on training for instructor teams at minority serving institutions, community college or four-year liberal arts colleges. Uh, the idea is that you would be able to have a training, a two-day data science workshop hosted on your campus. And the application includes all three steps uh, all together. And accepted teams, it'd be teams of uh, staff or faculty uh, or research scientists, uh, research scientists um, that would receive that would be hosting this workshop. It would be funded through the South Hub um, in conjunction with software and data carpentry um, on fundamental data science skills for either faculty or students. The accepted team members would then receive travel funding to Atlanta for a workshop next November uh, for training on how to run your own data science boot camps and workshops uh, in the same style. And then those teams would then be able to post their own workshops on their campuses in 2019. So today, this webinar is the big picture for Big Data Science Education Network. And we have uh, fantastic speakers, as I said. Uh, so we have Nick Nicholas Horton from Amherst College, um, Lillian Cassell from Villanova University, uh, Yuri Dimenchenko uh, from the University of Amsterdam, uh, and Melissa Cragen, who is the executive director for the Midwest Big Data Hub, and Carl Schmidt, um, who is at Valparaiso University. So we're going to start off with Nick, and welcome. Great, Renata. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for your leadership, vision, and energy in really making this report and bringing this community together. It's been really exciting to be part of it, and I'm really excited to hear about the data up initiative and other things. But let me jump in uh, right now and, and share my screen. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and do that for um, the Google Hangout. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do it for, um, sorry, let me just get the right uh, screen set up. So I'm going to start my screen share um, and now go ahead and um, allow that to start. And does that look OK? Are you now seeing my slides? Yep. Great. So the, the, the big, big picture today, Education Network, and uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about some related data science initiatives that I think are relevant for the community. These slides will be posted with the links, um, and I really want to kind of go through a number of these because uh, they're, they're mentioned in the report, but I think give us a good foundation moving forward. The first one are the American Statistical Association's guidelines for statistics major and minor programs, which really enunciated back in 2014 the need for an integration of computational skills, statistical theory, practice, and communication. And with that, with that, the community in statistics and other related disciplines needed to restructure the curriculum to help students really think with data. And this report really stresses the key role of data science. More recently, the Park City group of um, put together guidelines for data science programs, and they really called for how we teach introductory computer science 
Um, they've described the learning outcomes for a series of data science one and two courses that are different from the learning outcomes for a CS one, two, or three, but really bring in the parts that are important for people to be having as a foundation. Similarly, we can't afford to have a long list of. You can't see your slides, uh, so you have to project in, pre in presenter mode. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Uh, so just hit full screen. So um, I think this may be an issue with my, um, um, so now it's full screen. Is that any better? Uh, it looks like it is. It, I, I don't see a full screen on our side, but we, if you just click on the slides, we'll be able to see them. Yeah, so Costa, this is, I think, the issue where there's two uh, things in there in PowerPoint. Um, yeah. Just try to share your entire screen. From okay, so yeah. if I go back and I'm screen sharing, um, hit stop and then hit the green button again and then do share entire screen and then whatever you do we'll see so if you go full screen on your slides we'll see full screen on your slides um, and now it's it's misbehaving at this point um, uh, Renata, can I just jump out for one minute and let you move on to the next presentation and come back? I, I think I know how to fix this, but it'll just take me a minute. No problem. No problem. So we'll come back to Nick, and we'll start with Lillian. Hi, Lillian. Hi. I'm generally known as Boots, and it's quite okay to call me Boots. <laughs> um, so I don't have Nick's to... to um, uh, work off, but um, so let me think about how to start. Um, I'm I'm here because I've been involved in a number of data science education related projects. I was honored to be invited to the meeting that we had in Atlanta on actually on Halloween, um, and uh, I was part of a, a an NSF sponsored project in October of 2015 that brought together a number of people who have interests in data science, including Nick Horton and a couple of other people who are, are related to what we're doing now. Um, and the, the, the group um, represented a lot of areas. And one of the things that we wanted to emphasize in terms of keeping data science broad, but from perhaps a different perspective was about the breadth of the knowledge areas, the breadth of the subject matter that is part of data science and th that that does not involve only science and engineering and the traditional things we think of from the STEM disciplines, but that it includes um, the humanities areas. The, the historians deal with a lot of data and need the same kind of data science activity that other areas need. Um, the same thing with English people who are looking at the characteristics of text and identifying authorship, um, that there are lots of different ways of looking at data science and that it's not all STEM related. I think that's a really critical uh, component of talking about keeping data science broad. Um, the workshop that we had in October identified a number of areas as being critical to anything related to data science. It included machine learning, not surprisingly, statistics, knowledge of algorithms, programming, software engineering. Um, it emphasized a lot communication with very diverse audience, the fact that oral and written skills are essential, the ability to work in team, evidence-based decision-making, um, decision support, um, pattern recognition, data shaping, visualization, privacy, security, and integrity. So. That's a, an important component that comes up a lot, and I think it's really critical that we make sure that this never gets lost, that any time we're talking about data, that we're making people more um, able to get, uh, get hold of and work with large quantities of data, that understanding the responsibility that goes with that is really critical also. Um, so I guess that's the, the most important parts of it the um, things that the, this group decided needed to be included. But one aspect, um, it's a little unnerving because I keep seeing other people on the screen, so I don't know if anybody's seeing me or not. Um, but um, this group 
um, was asked one important question at the end of the workshop, and that was, is it necessary, is it at, at this point important to have a curriculum recommendation for data science? And the anonymous vote was yes, but it was a yes, but. Uh, and the but was, it yes, but it can't be too rigid, it can't be too specific. Um, and that there had to be a lot of flexibility because given the nature of the many, many kinds of data that we work with, the many kinds of groups that will be doing data science related activities, um, that it's, it's going to be important to have flexibility. So there, yes, there are core things that have to be there for everybody, but the way they're presented, the way they're integrated, the way they're combined will vary depending on the group. Um, there is also, a, there is a website that has a copy of the report from that group, and I just put it in the chat box. Um, the, um, so that report is available, and it would be interesting to combine that with the report that's coming out of this group. I think you'll see a lot of overlap and some, some differences. Um, there's also coming up in Baltimore in February, the ACM um, special interest group in computer science education. Um, there will be a birds of a feather session on data science education on uh, in the Baltimore Convention Center Thursday, the end of, um, of uh, February. So I guess that's all I really wanted to say, that there are some echo, that the fact that uh, in response to the workshop and the workshop recommendations, ACM has formed a committee to be in the process of a curriculum recommendation. Yes, we know there are lots of others of them out there. And one of the interesting things going forward, we'll be looking at how the information from various groups compares and how we, we bring something out that um, that is useful across the board. So I don't want to take up any more time, but I'd be happy to address questions and you know contact me for further information on these things. Thank you, Lillian, or thank you, Boots, okay. uh, for uh, for giving us that information. I think we have uh, Nick back. Yes, as well. So, Nick, are you uh, here? Sorry for the complications, and let me um, kind of jump back into what I uh, now think is a full screen mode. So, let me know if that's not the case. Yeah. Um, I was great to hear Boots's um, comments, um, and it really dovetails in what. Uh, some of the other things out there, the statistics major and minor programs, really this importance of we need to be descriptive but not prescriptive. And that was really a big part of those guidelines. The Park City Group kind of took that to the next level, though I do think we need to continue to be refining this and to see how these approaches and guidelines from Park City can be brought forward and then augmented as we proceed. Um, this really has a multi-year sequence to it. And I think the main implication for a lot of this was we needed new approaches and new structures curricularly to be effective, to really be doing data science. And so I'm glad to hear about the ACM efforts in those areas. I'm part of two initiatives through the National Academies. One is the, the consensus study, the Envisioning Data Science Discipline, the Undergraduate Perspective, which is really seeking to identify what some of the core underlying principles, intellectual content, and pedagogical issues that really discipline data science from neighboring disciplines. The interim report is available. It's actually cited by Renata's report that she'll be unveiling later today. Um, but there's also going to be a full report and a final report coming out in the spring and the summer. Um, really, this was focused on the undergraduate level, but with obvious connections between K K-12, the important role that community colleges play, and then really thinking about what experiences for master's level programs can actually be done at the undergraduate level. Um, and with a real also explicit focus on engaging underrepresented student populations and thinking about this broadening initiative that the South Data Hub has really taken on. Another initiative is the Data Science Education Roundtable. Um, a number of the people who are on the call today have presented as part of that roundtable on post-secondary education. And this was really intended to bring together CS, stat, math, and domain experts to strengthen ties between industry and academia and to highlight new and innovative programs. Website for this is given here. What's nice about that is that the meetings are advertised, live streamed, archived, and summarized. So you can actually see the details. We've had a, a fairly large number of viewers for those. 
past meetings have focused on the foundations of data science, the main expertise and data science and how those intersect, thinking about data science in the workplace, kind of thinking continuing education, alternative mechanisms to deliver data science education, and our most recent thing last month on integrating ethics and privacy, really important issues. Future meetings are gonna be talking about teaching data science as a scientific process. And I think this is an area where it's different from the ways traditionally the statistics or the computational sciences have approached their, uh, their teaching. There's a follow-up meeting on two-year colleges in June, looking at uh, representation and diversity issues in September, and then balancing general education and employable skills in Washington, D.C. at the end of 2018. Another thing that's, I think, relevant that will be interesting looking over the coming uh, months is an initiative that's been funded by the NSF, organized by the American Statistical Association, to bring together a two-year data science summit. And this, is, this workshop will really think about what are model programs and how can we really be defining those in a flexible manner that can really help train people at the associates level. Related projects I just wanted to mention was the collection on Peer J of some practical data science, which much of which is really thought of at, at a level that could be accessible at the undergraduate level. And finally, David Donahoe's uh, excellent and insightful paper about 50 years of data science with an accompanying set of discussions and focus on educational implications. And all that, those papers and discussion are available freely at this website. Um, so thank you. I'll let th things turn over the next speaker, but I look forward to hearing more about other initiatives. And as I said, these slides will be made available with the links. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Now, so there's a lot of good uh, connections there so people can be able to plug into different efforts in this area. Um, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, which is Yuri Jemenchenko uh, from the Universidad in Ivana. Amsterdam, and he has been working with the European uh, Big Data Value Association, which is uh, similar but very different um, to the big data hubs here in the US, um, and talking about their programs uh, and projects. So, Yuri? Okay, so I, I've got the mirror effect, so let me first share screen. Switch off camera. Oh, this is it. Uh, okay, so you see my uh, slides, yes? Yes, can you go to full screen? And I will make full screen in a second. Okay, so this is my presentation. Okay, I already had many interesting things that I would like to also continue discussion. Uh, we, we run a project called Edison, funded by European Commission. And this was for two years. It finished in September. Uh, and uh, actually, we knew that project will not continue immediately funded. Develop a couple of uh, continuation uh, tactics, how to uh, continue our activity, mostly moving to community support and community engagement. Uh, but uh, in this presentation, I want to show you what we actually achieved in the project. So uh, it was just fun, quite funny to see the uh, 50 years of data science. Uh, yes, I, we had a lot of such kind of uh, statements, but actually uh, what we did, uh, actually not redefined, really but we clarified what data science is meant by majority of industry and uh, looking at the job market. So what, what kind of specialist that is on the market called data scientist, data analyst are required by industry? Uh, there are a number, number of uh, studies. Uh, some of them, uh, first of you see in the uh, first two is a European study on the European data market that identified a huge gap of specialists and also a European report on European Open Science Cloud also identified like half a million of data specialists for science, did to report Price with the Coopers and BHEF. I think you know what is a business high education forum. It's very active. It was uh, last two years in uh, defining data science competences, skills, 
So they initiated two, two reports. And these reports actually saying that uh, pure data scientists are only uh, some part, part of the market re requirement. And majority of other demand for data science skills is from the so-called data science enabled data science analytics enabled jobs so we actually put all this report in there uh, as a basis for building the final our products in the in the second year of the project uh, and we created a number of uh, uh, i would say products or uh, definitions uh, this also slide just to show that uh, extremely important part of uh, requirement to new specialist called data science scientist list and whatever profession is a uh, um, so-called professional skills is not directly related to the uh, technical skills or uh, say analytics or computer skills so uh, this also was a uh, something that we uh, uh, revisited in the project and uh, this slide shows actually what we uh, created in the project. First of all is the uh, Edison Data Science Framework. It's a set of uh, document and uh, definitions uh, starting from a competence framework to body of knowledge, model curriculum and data science professional profiles. Uh, back slightly. And the uh, flow, how to define uh, the, uh, the requirements of the company or whatever defined the uh, professional profiles and all this based actually on the uh, comp data science competence framework and you see this uh, big diagram uh, including the body of knowledge model curriculum and profiles uh, so uh, we needed also a revisit definition of what data scientist or who is data scientist and uh, based this mostly on the definition of the NIST uh, that they defined quite well known uh, Wayne, Wayne diagram for data science is a data analytics, data science engineering domain knowledge. We also identified that companies, then they built their data science teams and data science, I would say, uh, 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 skills. They also require uh, data management, data governance as a, one of the main, uh, one of the important part of the data science uh, uh, competences and skills, and also research methods, makes the data science uh, different from uh, data analytics, statistics, and so on. And uh, if you look at different standards, the uh, uh, DAMA, Data Management Association, that produced data, uh, data management body of knowledge, is a 600 page. They include a chapter about data science that specifically mentioned that uh, data science, data scientists need to, is focused on discovering some new relations, new, not known uh, before the starting of analysis of uh, waste amount of data. Uh, this how it uh, looks like this uh, uh, more in bigger format, uh, the data science uh, competence uh, framework visualization you see three types of skills plus data management and uh, research method training or research methods or business method for the general background and also, i would say professional uh, uh, orientation of the data scientists uh, and, uh, skills next to competences i just want to say that in Europe, is actually common uh, 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 how it's called convention to use to say not competency but competences, competence. So this is a part of the standard, and I know that in United States is competency. Okay, so we defined uh, uh, skills, skills much more uh, extended for the data scientists that include few groups, and the group uh, uh, is uh, one group is uh, soft skills or work workspace skills and this also quite rich definition uh, because even having our experience is implementing and working as universities we define that uh, data scientists need to be uh, 
specifically uh, education for data scientists, specifically targeted for developing specific skills, academics, professional skills, or works, workplace skills. And what's interesting that University of Amsterdam even started this year including this uh, kind of skills or training for students starting from the first year. And uh, data science uh, competence framework is a document. Okay, uh, all data science framework is a, a set of four documents, each of them from uh, 40 to uh, 70 pages. It defines many, many things that uh, partly formalized and can be used directly into uh, design of uh, definition of uh, professional profiles, defining job uh, uh, job profile, also creating tests and questions and so on. So this what is, has a quite uh, uh, practical implementation and already has, has had some implementation during the project time. Uh, important part of this data science framework is uh, we define the data science professional uh, professions family. And this includes managers, professional, professional database, uh, data handling, and so on. Uh, because typically, if a company creates a, a data science team or department, a scientist. It's starting from managers to the supporting worker, workers, and also uh, say how it's called, uh, data handling clerks. And this is also opportunity for uh, young people start career and reach from lower level to higher level. Uh, so this was quite positive. And uh, what happens next? Already standard is called ESCO that defines professional profiles, and this is standard uh, for all European countries. So uh, we will uh, we are we are contributed to the next revision of this standard this uh, a number of uh, data science related profiles uh, so what is what is for education uh, specifically for education the project developed a data science body of knowledge that is based on uh, many body of knowledge including what we learn from acm uh, uh, computer science body of knowledge and so on uh, and uh, uh, data science model curriculum. Uh, all these two tools can be used for uh, designing uh, the uh, specific uh, individual or uh, tailored curriculum. So if you start from the professional profiles that we need to educate and all, uh, from competences that we need to actually reach, as they define the learning outcome and based on this, we define uh, learning units, add uh, knowledge units from body of knowledge, and this will create a number of specific topics, educational topics that we need to put in this program. And based on this, the uh, choice to create the prog program uh, curriculum uh, uh, based on available uh, uh, stuff available competences and also uh, a lab uh, a lab facilities because uh, for specific uh, uh, skills and training the having a facility for hands-on experience is essential and this uh, if we next will uh, define uh, the how to use this uh, framework so we also plan to uh, make a recommendation for which kind of software, which kind of hardware should be included into uh, uh, the educational uh, facility. Those how it's how competence really can be used for assessing the uh, this is a uh, red is a uh, the position or required profile of data scientist and uh, green is a candidate. So a uh, company can assess this, see the difference, and after that uh, decide either decline this candidate or uh, uh, give them opportunity to 
is their skills and competences. And for candidates, it's a very good advice what they need to learn to become a, so say, ideal data scientist. Uh, this example, how this can be created a team. Uh, this is what uh, we're currently working on uh, defining the uh, fully uh, formalized uh, uh, body of knowledge competence framework and make them in a form of API. Uh, still in a progress, but uh, the next step will be creating GitHub project and uh, starting uh, developing API. Uh, this is example how we can use this tool, still not in the fully uh, automatic way. So we can uh, run uh, uh, all this set of scripts and define the curriculum uh, content for the data scientist. You see, mostly this is data science analytics, slightly data management. And if you have da uh, data stewards, the majority of his data management and analytics. This is what uh, I would want to show you uh, just invite for discussion that data science professional skills is uh, very es essential. And it's also commonly understood that uh, data scientists, ideal data scientists, what's actually companies dream, should have very specific mindset. Besides this, they also need to be a kind of, uh, 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 has a features of so-called 21st century skills with quite uh, also different and uh, widely recognized, recognized in the last recent time. Uh, our next step, step. So we are planning to make release uh, of the data science framework number three. Uh, you see what will be quality and also have some simple tools for uh, self-assessment and curriculum design. And uh, uh, this certification authority will be successful. We will develop a certification uh, framework and uh, we'll start running certification training and courses. And uh, one of the items what we are very much expect cooperation this uh, uh, internationally and specifically United States on defining the other components to make the data science uh, profession defined more formally, widely recognized, and using what was uh, done in a former time by IEEE and ACM. In particular, what was Boots, a uh, very active and actually key person. Uh, we will run a first champion conference in Endeburg in May. So if, uh, 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 we will start posting very soon the call for papers and would like to invite people to come. Unfortunately, we cannot support travel for conference. First three conferences was, were supported by uh, project. Now if we don't have this money, that most of the audience will be present. And uh, my presentation will contain contains a number of links that you can use to learn content outcome. So we have a number of examples of already teaching, implementing this. I'm personally uh, developing a couple of courses already uh, doing. And uh, University of Amsterdam that has a uh, five data science programs, they actually adopting a couple of common uh, components like uh, data science management, professional profile, professional skills training, uh, and also uh, very, very, very high demand for uh, uh, data science uh, engineering, in particular data science, uh, big data infrastructure. Because then even business people be become familiar with uh, data science methods and tools, they are starting asking, how to do this practically, how to implement in our uh, organizations. And major approach is actually the using cloud. And we have a demand from all programs, five programs, uh, four programs, 
because one of the specifically data science infrastructure. Uh, demand to uh, add courses on uh, big data and data science infrastructure tools and uh, and solutions. Okay, so this is what I wanted to say. Long head and time limits, but yeah. you can excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. Yes, I, um, so thank you for all of your work. I definitely wanted to connect it with this group and um, on the webinar for the for the U.S. audience to get connected with specifically. I know we talked about the API effort, um, if that's something that uh, people can be connected with uh, as well. We'll get that up on the site and also looking at how those frameworks uh, could be used uh, in the US as well as incorporated into some of the things we've talked about throughout mm -hmm. this series. Um, so I, I'm gonna move on, but we're gonna have questions and I like to encourage people who are watching live to put your questions in the chat and we will ask them of all the panelists at the end as well as keep up uh, a list of some of the links. So we're gonna try and get slides from everyone as well going forward. Um, so next is Melissa Cragen uh, from the Midwest Big Data Hub, um, who has been active in this project as well on the program committee. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the programs they're thinking of implementing there in the Midwest. And Melissa. Hi, Renata, thank you. Hi, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here today. I'm going to just turn on my screen sharing here and my presentation, uh, so bear with me. We'll get that loaded up. Um, so I want to echo some thoughts uh, as I get started here. Uh, so this is this has been a great a great webinar series uh, and, a, and just a great initiative. I think um, highly impactful. Everyone that's been participating so far, and I I am uh, hopeful and and am pretty sure that the audience. Uh, over the over the course of the webinars is um, uh, getting a lot out of this uh, as well. So let me, uh, I, I won't spend a lot of time on the first couple slides, but I, I wanted to just uh, show the states where the Midwest hub is here in green. So we're 12 states, upper Midwest. Uh, of course, we have collaborators and partners from other states in the country. Uh, and we we uh, we embrace that and welcome that. And when we talk about a couple of our initiatives, um, you'll see uh, how we're how people are participating in those from around the country as well. So, very briefly, um, just for people who might not have been to the other webinars uh, and maybe potentially are new to the hubs, um, all four of the hubs, while we articulate our mission just a little bit differently, we actually have a common mission, uh, and really it's about building partnerships and collaborations. Um, but but to be able to build capacity in data science and, and big data across our regions and across the nation um, to, to address not only um, national but regional issues as well, scientific and societal, uh, and, and help build out the, the national big data ecosystem, which is what this initiative uh, you know, addresses full on. Um, in the Midwest, uh, we also have priority areas, um, uh, and we have some underlying ones besides these primary areas or sectors that we're engaged in here. Um, uh, and the reason I show these is it has um, significance for the kinds of training programs we have across small institutions in the U.S., both two- and four-year schools, uh, as well as as well as uh, minority serving institutions that you know the idea or the opportunity to, to teach data science across the curriculum uh, is is very high we have opportunities there these smaller institutions are really providing a large uh, proportion of the, the US workforce and so we have opportunities not only to teach straight data science but also think about uh, encouraging data science activities across the kinds of sectors that all the hubs are engaged in and that we're all uh, involved with in our states and regions. So what are we doing uh, in, in the Midwest? Um, just a little bit of background here and then I'll talk about the, the current uh, larger initiative and where we're headed uh, for that. So um, we've, been, we've been supporting direct uh, activities to engage data science uh, and build capacity both for training and development for early career researchers 
uh, as well as for, for graduate students. So we provided some direct dollars for people uh, to go out and, and uh, have direct engagement with industry around data sharing, to go to research methods training that involve data science in areas that, uh, that a graduate student might not otherwise train in, uh, and also to, to provide professional engagement. So one of the things that we've done is help support people's travel to go and interact with new kinds of communities to help build capacity, whether it's cross cross domain capacity or moving into more uh, technical areas uh, and help support interactions of faculty with data science uh, kinds of activities in their classroom. Um, we also provide uh, support, sometimes direct, direct training, but also support for group training. So we send entire groups to software carpentry, for example, um, but we now also have an initiative um, similar, but not, not exactly like the data up program being run in the South. Um, we've, uh, we are partnering with Data Carpentry uh, to provide a train the trainer uh, series of trainings across the Midwest. Um, some of this is focused in the agriculture, food, energy, water area, but also we're doing outreach specifically to the tribal colleges to help uh, build up some data science expertise uh, around some of the smaller schools. Uh, and more rural schools uh, in the Midwest. Um, and the other thing we do is, is uh, for the last couple summers, and we will continue over the next couple of years, running something for early career researchers called the, Mid, uh, the Midwest Big Data Summer uh, School. And that's a week long institute that happens at Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. Um, I won't I won't spend any time here, but of course we're engaged in a number of other areas. And sometimes it's me, um, the reason I want to bring this up is we also provide sometimes support for other people to go and engage in these other kinds of regional and national meetings around data science. So again, it's about this is about supporting professional engagement to help build capacity. So um, what we what we started to think about uh, and learn, and I and I have to uh, call out Lior Shamir here, who was one of, one on one of the earlier web uh, webinars. Lior is a faculty member at Lawrence Technical University, uh, and I believe he's also associate or acting uh, 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 research uh, administration at LTU. Um, and Lior uh, and I started talking about the fact that a large, as I mentioned, a large number um, of our workforce, large percentage of the workforce across the US is coming out of smaller institutions. Um, which don't have the kinds of resources that are available at the R1 schools, which means that students don't necessarily get to engage in the same kinds of opportunities. Um, and therefore, it becomes more difficult in terms of competition uh, for those positions, but also with really with training a well-skilled workforce. Um, and so in, in, that, in that idea, we started thinking about what would it mean to develop a big data for small institutions or small colleges resource center of course, this will be a virtual center and distributed, which makes it both hopefully scalable and sustainable. Um, so we, uh, in, in the context of um, thinking about how to do this in the Midwest, but then also think about how do we scale it up across and provide access to these resources across the US, uh, we've put together a, a sort of planning grant activity We've invested about $87,000 into this activity over the course of the year, which will lead to a larger proposal, um, potentially a spoke proposal and, uh, and related proposals um, out of this. Lior is leading that effort. Uh, we are working hard at doing network building as part of this effort uh, and some collaborative planning around activities. Um, and we're building off uh, some of the same gaps identified uh, in the Keeping Data Science Broad initiative. Um, but we've also done some of our own uh, background work here with some institutions in the Midwest, uh, looking at existing resources and opportunities. Uh, and so we got to what do we, what do, we do next? Um, and, and so as part of that, uh, we launched this effort. So the first meeting, uh, the kickoff meeting was October 3rd as part of the Midwest Big Data Hub All Hands meeting. Um, and there was a set of objectives, so really figuring out what do we do. And I'm sorry that this photo is a little bit blurry. Uh, it's not quite the resolution I, I wish, but, uh, but there you have it. There are the people that were engaged in the meeting that day. And they, uh, 
spent a lot of time discussing what are the gaps? How do we think about closing those gaps? Um, what sorts of modes of information sharing do faculty at small institutions need? What would be the most supportive? And interestingly, um, having shared chat or, or text-based or web-based information spaces uh, was thought to be quite helpful. So not simply a dump of resources, but a place where people could interact and share thoughts and, exp and, and experiences with, uh, with materials or, or uh, learning activities, for example. Um, we also, they also spend some time talking about inclusion, outreach, and measuring of success, uh, and then what to do about um, starting to formulate a, a proposal. Um, I've, I've given a very truncated uh, set of uh, summary points here, um, but, but really one of the underlying themes um, is that um, in addition to thinking about data science across the curriculum, that in fact the cross-disciplinary nature of data science makes this unique and potentially is a barrier for small institutions where um, often there are uh, very small numbers of people around a particular domain and maybe maybe someone or no one around a particular uh, topic area. So the idea of thinking about collaborations and team teaching uh, has to become more flexible than it might be now. And so what kinds of resources are needed to support that? Um, but also the need for uh, building up capacity for students to have access to research opportunities. So not only across the curriculum, but also thinking about a number of uh, components to that, like problem formulation and problem solving, but also self-efficacy. So for students that are uncomfortable, for example, whether it's with quantitative methods or uncomfortable with certain areas of science, being able to say, look, you can engage with data. You can be successful at doing a research project. Uh, you're able to be successful at carrying out analyses and showing the results of those. Those sorts of opportunities to show competency and self-efficacy uh, really encourage people to then be more creative and interested in, in uh, going after new opportunities. Um, so we, you know, we spent some time thinking about that and that that's part of the conversation that's ongoing in terms of how to approach some of uh, data science across the curriculum. And finally, uh, just a point um, also just in terms of technology, the fact that often at small institutions, um, there's limited access not only to uh, high-speed networks and cloud services, but sometimes high-performance computing uh, and the resources needed to support activities around high-performance research computing uh, and, and other kinds of technology applications. So what's next for this? Um, well, there's a public website up now. Uh, the, 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 uh, the URL is here, and of course, we will also post these slides. Um, we're really happy that uh, Franklin Marshall University is also from Pennsylvania, is also participating, as are some schools from other, st uh, other states outside the region. Um, but they've also provided us uh, with supporting some of the uh, communication and ongoing planning for the, for the team. Uh, and we're grateful for that. Um, our next um, planning meeting is happening in March here in Chicago. Um, and then we've put in a proposal to PERC. Um, PERC is the, um, the offshoot uh, of what used to be the Exceed, Exceed annual conference. And Exceed uh, is, a, is a very large scale distributed resource for high performance or advanced research computing um, and, uh, and um, similar communities related to supporting a computational research across uh, campuses in the US. And so the reason we targeted um, a co-located meeting there is because it would afford the faculty and administrators at the small schools opportunity to start to interact and potentially build collaborations um, around getting access to resources and services they don't have ac access to on their local campuses. Um, and then we'll move into putting together a, a full proposal for the Virtual Resource Center, um, which will focus on virtual organization, distributed center resources, and those resources will include best practices, curriculum, potentially teaching modules, um, uh, and other things. And then um, really thinking about sustainability and scale. So I want to thank you. I'll, I'll leave it there and, uh, of course, open to questions uh, when the time is uh, available. Thank you, Melissa. 
Uh, and for all the things they were doing in the Midwest, I think that we're going to I follow up and we're going to have a uh, talk with all of the hubs about, you know, education and workforce uh, and an omission on my part, which is purely uh, put it up to my mind and not my heart because she's definitely a very important part of this particular uh, effort and has been here from the beginning. It's a uh, Catherine uh, Kramer. Thank you, Melissa has been there from the beginning as well. And also Catherine Kramer, who's gonna be next, our next speaker. Um, and she is the senior program developer for the New York Hall of Science uh, Museum, who works at the intersection of data-driven science and learning specifically as it pertains to understanding of the complexity and the application to data and network sciences, uh, particularly with a focus on underrepresented communities. I mean, in this role, she has focused on developing tools for teaching and learning of complex networks and data science uh, and is focused on uh, data literacy currently, um, looking at uh, leading uh, literacy efforts for the Northeast Big Data Hub, as well as social network analysis for the hubs in general. So welcome, Catherine. Thanks so much, Renata, and thank you for the nice in introduction. Um, and I'm really happy to be here um, with everybody, all of the co-presenters. And as others have mentioned, uh, the workshop a few months ago was um, really exemplary and um, really a nod to, to you, Renata, for pulling that off and pulling off the writing of this great report. Um, I know um, I was very happy to uh, be a part of it. Uh, so I'm going to do a share here and hope that you can see my screen full size. Does that look right? Perfect. Great, terrific. So yes, uh, as Renata just said, data literacy, um, you know, talk a little bit about the need um, and the next steps. And um, why don't I just start with what the report um, that we've mentioned a few times says about data literacy up at the introduction, um, that it tackles the definitions within data science, infusing data science into non-STEM courses, and the link to general critical thinking skills as well as student needs. And for, um, I know our co-presenters and probably a lot of you who are watching, um, this isn't news to you that we're in a data revolution. We're uh, literally uh, drowning in data. Uh, we're gathering data at such a fantastic rate um, science and engineering have been transformed and we're facing a kind of Moore's law for data-driven science, uh, exponential growth, what Jim Gray has called the fourth paradigm. And this is an era uh, of, of ours that we're living in right now in which computer users worldwide generate enough digital data every 15 minutes to fill the U.S. Library of Congress. And so our ability to gather data has vastly outstripped our ability to analyze it all. And of course, as, as uh, others have mentioned as well, um, what's the problem? Well, beyond STEM, the transformation in science is mirrored across all kinds of domains and the kinds of skills that are now demanded of graduates. Um, everything from tech startups to Fortune 500 companies, research labs, um, uh, almost every workplace has dramatically shifted away from a focus on individual and compartmentalized skills that are uh, in hierarchies to nimble and highly creative collaborative, interdisciplinary and analytic skills. And the kinds of questions we ask of ourselves, the degree of complexity at all scales and the complexity of the problems that policymakers, the public, citizens, industry are called upon to address are increasingly interdisciplinary and complex. And those routine, manual and repetitive tasks of the past are they're either completely automated or in fact no longer relevant. So what have uh, education uh, approaches done about this? Well, our education approaches um, have, are literally, um, have not done much. The uh, skills that are needed, uh, emphasis is on design, construction, visualization of large scale data, the federation of multivariate data streams, uh, the exploratory stochastic pattern seeking, pattern seeking interdisciplinary approaches, machine learning, semantic databases and ontologies, more available and interoperable large data structures. But as I just said, um, science um, and in fact, most subjects are still taught in the same way as they were in the 1950s. 
But so here we are, and uh, we have an opportunity, and we have an opportunity to close the gap um, to transform human knowledge um, with data science uh, and to bring the public along with us, and which is not only the most ethically responsible thing to do, it's really the only way that this process can, can, can continue at such a rapid pace. We need a data literate public. We need data literate policy and education sectors. And this is the impetus that uh, uh, for us to start this process to build capacity for data literacy that can scale and to close the gap between all of us in here with everybody out there. So just a little bit of background of, of um, so what do we mean by data literacy per se? And by the way, um, this is one of the things up for much discussion, but um, although I am, as, as um, Renata mentioned, a member of the uh, Northeast Big Data Hub, um, we have found that the term big data confuses people. So we've kind of simplified it to data literacy as opposed to big data literacy, but we use those terms a little interchangeably. Um, and I know, uh, there are many um, who may object to that, but as I said, that's open to discussion. Um, earlier literacy efforts um, could be based on a process we've used in the past to gain consensus across a science discipline, such as uh, oceanography or uh, a lit area of literacy concern. concern. Um, this grassroots process was used to develop the ocean literacy principles a little over a decade ago. Uh, I was involved in that and quickly followed by um, other complex science literacies such as climate, atmospheric, and, and earth science literacies. And then most recently, um, some of us spearheaded this work on developing network literacy, essential concepts, and core ideas. That was begun at uh, UC Berkeley in June of uh, 2014. And um, there where uh, you can take a look at that and it tells a little bit more of the story and you can download the uh, brochure, which has been translated now into 20 languages. Um, and just a minute um, of uh, background about what we're doing at the New York Hall of Science and how a science museum is involved in this work. Um, we've been working in the worlds of complex networks, big science, um, developmental skills, data-driven sciences, and most recently, smart cities, particularly uh, as it pertains as smart cities ideas pertain to under underrepresented communities. Um, we've been at this um, for about uh, almost 20 years. And that brings us to our involvement with the Northeast Hub. Uh, 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 Steve Uzo, who was on one of the earlier webinars, he's the uh, chief scientist at NYSI and I, um, received a planning grant um, called uh, Big Data Literacy, Building Capacity for Regional Collaboration in Closing the Big Data Divide. And some of the goals for um, this work is galvanizing big data communities of practice around learning and education, identifying and articulating the nature and quality of big data education resources, and drafting a set of big data literacy essential principles and a planning document um, with strat strategies um, across um, really K through 20 uh, learning settings. And then making recommendations for its trajectory over the next five years, proposing a, a set of priority education strategies for sub subsequent implementation, and then a subsequent initiative, which brings us, uh, of course, to the work that we're doing that um, we've been doing with Renata and the rest of the people involved in the Keeping Data Science Broad community and hope to continue and hope you will continue to work on with us. Um, so what part of the Big Data Literacy grant involved was this idea of collaborative inquiry in which we brought members of the Northeast Big Data Hub together into an inquiry group. And we then invited them um, together with other data scientists to a two-day workshop that was last April uh, to validate our conclusions and look at what it would take to fill the gap between assessment and data practice across all settings and domains of work and the outcome of this process helped validate the need for and to identify this emerging, emerging community of practice that's focused on data literacy and is, is now ongoing. And that brings us to the report. Uh, the data literacy goals, as stated in the, in the report, uh, a commonly understood definition of data literacy, a published handbook, um, inclusion of a data literacy component in every introductory course, ensuring that data literacy is pervasive throughout the curriculum, teacher training for using data liter literacy approaches, 
and that all students starting in pre-K will receive uh, data literacy through curriculum. And using some backward design from career pathways, um, figuring out the skills needed, uh, defining the relationship that data literacy has to domain science, um, as well as a related set of skills and education and educational experiences in other areas um, such as business intelligence, machine learning, and so forth. Um, and of course, the hope that data science will be seen as an engaging, creative, and imperative body of knowledge and the foundation of fact-based critical thinking. As far as our stakeholders, well, that's simple. All citizens, all citizens of the 21st century should be data literate by the time they graduate from high school. And as far as our next steps, well, to develop a globally accepted definition of data literacy, um, create a critical thinking course, couple data literacy uh, with a discussion of ethics, which is so important, develop a portfolio of work, offer uh, teacher workshops at all levels, develop critical thinking and computational thinking curricula, strengthen foundational math skills, and strengthen application-based problem-solving skills. Sounds simple, right? Well. Um, we're aiming to get there. Um, we're growing capacity. Um, as a couple of people have mentioned, there are now these cross-hub collaborations and specifically on data literacy. We're looking forward to really ramping up that work as well as um, collaborations with the EU. As, as you heard from Yuri, um, there's so much uh, fantastic work going over there uh, with our EU partners and we're really looking forward to working with them. And we invite everyone uh, to please join us, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, Catherine. Yes, so this uh, data literacy uh, is something that we definitely has a crossover with what we were saying with the EU, as well as what's happening in the U.S. and what we're trying to incorporate uh, a broad audience. You know, so that's the real foundation of keeping it broad is bringing it to everyone. Uh, so we'd like to move on and have um, Dr. Carl Schmidt, uh, who is our final presenter for today uh, from Valparaiso University to talk to us about uh, what they've been doing as well. Carl? Sure. Thank you, Renata. Um, as everyone's been saying, you've organized a whole slew of fantastic things. And just listening today, I found out that there's a whole bunch of more things that apparently I needed to be aware of. And then I'm a I, perhaps some of my slides are even out of date. So um, I'm gonna tell you what I've got and hopefully mine are much more sort of like potential things and sharing of information. Um, so one, I've been running a blog called From the Director's Desk. Um, and so I've been trying there to highlight different data science education things specifically. So it's not really about data science, the field per se. There's lots of blogs about data science if you wanna read about machine learning or other things. But I'm really there trying to talk about things related to curriculum planning and course planning and educational stuff. So I've included things like summaries from some of the early webinars. I'm um, gonna run a series of summarizing the National Academy of Science webinars over the next couple of weeks and some other things. Um, I would welcome anyone that would like to do a guest post on there because I would love to be able to make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel over and over again, no matter where you're writing curriculum or designing things. Um, a little bit about what I've got there. I've got a couple of links to several open source curriculum examples and the curriculum guides that, for example, Boots mentioned earlier, and I think um, Nick mentioned earlier as well. I've got summaries of some of the webinars. I've got some discussions of coding language and things like this, and I'm open to whatever people want to see there. The other thing I wanted to at least let people know, and uh, hopefully we'll see what happens, uh, me and a collaborator have submitted a proposal to the to the NSF IUSE funding stream for a, to develop a data science concept inventory. Now, I, I, first off, it's potential. It got submitted in, on the, on, in December, so we'll know about funding somewhere in May or June. And I want to give a little bit of an outline of what, what the plan is and so where you uh, might be able to dial in and uh, you know, the, the call your local representative if you want to see this kind of thing get funded and make sure that you talk to the people that might be approving these sorts of things. Um, but just from seeing Yuri's presentation, I know we'll have to do some adjust, adjustments to our plan because part of what we wanted to make sure we were doing was facilitating community consensus building. And so some of this is going on through the National Academy of Sciences. Um, I've read their interim report. It's a fantastic report. Um, 
I'd like us to get into a, a even more nitty gritty of like actually defining what some of those intro classes explicitly core concepts might look like, similar to what um, the curriculum outlined by uh, Yuri highlights and, and or possibly sort of in the same vein as what's in the ACM computer science guidelines. Um, and that's sort of a, a gateway to actually what the grant is really about, which is that we want to have a concept inventory so that we can identify student misconceptions and non-expert thinking about these data science concepts. Um, to the point that we know that there are lots of ways of doing effective education. Uh, there's lots of scholarship of teaching and learning that sort of tells us what the best practices are. And we want to make sure that as data science grows as a discipline, we are starting from the better points that we already know about and making sure that we've got the tools in place, including something like a concept inventory, so that faculty aren't just trying to rediscover the things that other disciplines have already figured out. And part of that is to have something in, in place that lets us assess how well students are actually learning things. The particular collaboration opportunities that will occur if things are funded, we intend to hold several town hall and dissemination events at disciplinary conferences. And so those will go on throughout several different years of the program. And that'll be a chance for people to give direct input on things that we're discovering and talking about. We're also going to hold two different workshops. The first workshop will, would, if funded, would occur ideally in mid-August of this year. And there we plan to look at really trying to identify misconceptions, scope out what those intro classes should really cover in terms of the various kinds of things that one can learn about data science. And we are really going to make sure that just like Renata did when she put together the Keeping Data Science Broad workshop, we want to make sure that we brought in educators from all kinds of institutions and, and educational types. In fact, we've already got letters of commitment from several non-academic educator um, institutions like DataCamp and Metis, which runs data science boot camps, that they're, they're going to attend if we can hold the workshop. The other th workshop would be um, th the third year of the grant, where we'll actually be generating items for the concept inventory. And finally, um, both throughout and especially after about the third year, we'll be looking for test sites where if you want to give a try out to this, to try out the data science concept inventory, and depending on how much information you want to provide back to us, there's several different stages at which we'll be doing testing and looking for a lot of interaction. And our goal here is that in this five years, we'll be able to go through the whole process of development to really true validation and allowing some really innovative educational research that will let us all be teaching better data science from the very beginning. Um, if you'd like more information, either for the blog or about any of this, please feel free to email me or go look at the blog or email Catherine. Um, and otherwise, I'm looking forward to going carefully through Yuri's presentation and some of these other slides that have come up. And thank you, Renata, for having us. Thank you so much, Carl. Yeah, so for the, so we encourage that. Uh, Carl has also uh, already, we've already cross-posted some things from the blog, from the original well, workshop from his blog uh, and to the, the South Big Data Hub blog too. So we would love to keep that collaboration going as things happen around education um, so that we have a place where these things can be housed separately. Um, all right, so lastly, I wanted to, again, reach out to the people on the live stream and feel free to ask any questions of any of the panelists. Um, we did get um, some questions that came in, but specifically, I had one for the panel um, as a whole, and that is, as we move forward, all of these initiatives are around either data literacy, looking at skills for data science, what the program should really be. Um, is there, uh, I heard Melissa say something about a, a collaborative space and Carl just mentioned a collaborative inventory and Yuri has done a lot of work in this space for the Europeans. Um, what would be the uh, best way that you could see a forum happening um, for, for doing this. So we're going to have a just a document, but would people be able to contact you directly for your individual uh, initiatives? And can we put those into a project form as well? So just, just a response uh, uh, to the group. Uh, would you want a community form for this, or would you want people to reach out to you directly? Or both? Uh, I, I would say... Sorry. Uh, Yuri, I heard you. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, I think that uh, 
So if, uh, it's better if somebody have opportunity to support a community forum. It should be established. Uh, but uh, the individual contacts will definitely happen and discussion will go else. So we didn't realize this uh, essentially during the Edison project. Uh, we have a portal. Uh, uh, probably will not be capable to support uh, active discussion. So uh, the issue that if uh, it would be good that somebody will take uh, efforts or resources, the uh, uh, devote resources to support discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, community forum requires some kind of management monitoring, actually even redirecting questions to people inviting. If the, this opportunity exists somewhere in one of the projects, it would be very beneficial. Definitely, definitely. So we will be seeking out partners and projects for that. All right, and then I heard you, Catherine. Yes, um, thanks, Renata. And that's a great question. And I can refer to the experience we had with um, network literacy, which I mentioned when I was um, uh, talking about data literacy. Um, that, although it started with an in-person forum, um, just like we've done with our data literacy workshop. Um, we then went online and, and managed to actually do this work with a group of about 100 researchers and educators um, from the network science world um, from, ar from around the globe. Um, and it took about a year of you know iterating and, and so forth and back, back and forth on a Google Doc and an email. And, um, as far as data literacy goes, I think it'll most likely likely be a combination of both. We are, of course, looking for funding to have another in-person workshop, but um, I would love to hear directly from anyone who is interested in working on data literacy, um, because we will certainly be setting up something like a Google Doc or some kind of online forum for people to work on, because, of course, um, this isn't just a, a US issue, it's, it's global. And since we already have um, contacts with the, within the EU, we will certainly be um, setting up um, some kind of way to work uh, globally. And we welcome any input. Yeah, nice. Uh, anyone else? I know that I fired Carl and Boots. I did post that the Computing Portal Data Science Meeting uh, page has a discussion area. It's there, it's active, and anybody is welcome to it. Great, and we'll have all of these links. Some of the links aren't posting directly uh, into the chat, uh, but what we'll do is add them to the notes of the actual forum. So when you when we conclude, uh, presenters, you can send, if you wanna send me the links, uh, we can also add it as a, share it as a document. Good. Uh, Carl? Um, I'm happy to see connect uh, see for at least for my stuff emails directly and then um, I guess I had a question if if mm -hmm. you want um, okay. yeah so Yuri I was wondering so I was not aware of the Edison project but I was aware of the European Data Science Academy project and so I was sort of wondering if you could talk a little bit about how your work had interacted or has interacted with that project um, now I'm gonna have to go look at your stuff too but um, I'd love to hear if you've been working with them or what's been going on there. Uh, let us let me uh, explain. Uh, uh, yes, we knew about, you know, we know we cooperate with European uh, uh, data science, uh, uh, European Academy of uh, Data Science. There is another initiative that is uh, what Renata mentioned, uh, Big Data Value Association in their activity. Uh, but uh, uh, European uh, Data Science, uh, European Academy of Data Sciences, actually uh, 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 develop more practical uh, uh, courses that were developed, were targeted for universities and by member universities. Uh, what Edison did, Edison is a coordination support action didn't actually focus on specific university. We facilitated community, what we call champion university, uh, that are coordinatively developed, tested, and contributed to the uh, product of the project, uh, of Edison project. So this was allowed us 
to be not focused on delivering a couple of courses, what happens at in uh, Yetsa, Data Science Academy, correctly, yes. Uh, but uh, we, are f we are focusing on the foundational issues uh, that also uh, combining specific for uh, European research area and European industry, but surely not limited only uh, to European uh, focus or scope. Because you've seen we cooperated with American associations, uh, the uh, BHEF, Business Higher Education Forum, and we actually succeeded uh, in delivering together uh, the uh, competence framework and also recommendation for Asia Pacific area. Uh, so this is what the difference. So we created for the foundational framework and uh, uh, ETSA implementing them and many universities also doing. Great. Thanks. Thank you, yeah. Um, and you surveyed a lot of uh, industry partners in creating the framework for Edison, correct? Um, and do you have a sense of uh, how many? Uh, partners. Uh, this, uh, I, I would not say that we, we did specific survey. We, we did uh, market research. We uh, actually, uh, based on our, at the initial stage of the product, we were purely based on the, uh, what market demand, how they define data science, what is uh, required competences. And starting from the first delivery, we did a lot of consultation, presentation, workshop, and so on. Uh, at that time, uh, we joined it, uh, the study that done by BHEF, Sir Wiley, Fully contributing to shaping their uh, questionnaire study okay, and also uh, the reports. Uh, specifically, we did in Europe uh, two uh, uh, survey. One is based focused on defining what competences are uh, essential for data scientists, and second, what are professional profiles are. Uh, mm -hmm essential for data science, I would say, ecosystem or uh, family, profession family. And this was re responded, uh, it was open survey, responded around uh, 100 plus uh, another is 120, like respondents. But it's always uh, difficult to have a very wide coverage. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, thank you. And so, I'd like to say a few words just for contact information uh, for me, but I would also want to talk about the working group. So we posted that a community link, um, look out for it actually now on the South Hub site, the, the link to the full report uh, for this series, as well as the data up program. Uh, we're going to continue posting things from the presenters um, as well as uh, posting um, links and projects uh, in kind of a collaborative way uh, as we go along. So this, I think, has been received really uh, quite enthusiastically in a lot of sectors. Uh, both of the other webinars that we've had so far have had you know, 150 to over 200 uh, viewers as well as uh, participants and email reaching out. Uh, so. If uh, there are, I'm going to do quick, quickly just um, looking. If people want to reach out directly to me, uh, then you can feel free to do so. Uh, we have a the the view for the projects as well as looking at um, what the different uh, what my email address be. So I think I closed it, so I'm going to stop sharing. But I'll add it to the to the live chat to the link. Um, and you can always visit South Creek Data Hub. I'd like to give the opportunity we have six minutes, or about five minutes left, for any closing statements about the series or about um, this particular issue of education from our panelists. So just like a quick minute from each person, kind of closing out your views as well as um, 
how you've seen the series progressing and going into the future. So I'm going to start with Catherine, who's on my side. Sure. Um, well, again, thank you for this opportunity. And Renata, I have to say that um, the workshop, <clears throat> sorry, among other things, is in addition to producing this really great and important um, and useful report, it really um, managed to gather us into what I would call a really active community of practice. So for me, an important next step is keeping this community of practice together. Um, and I know for you as the main organizer, you also um, would have an idea of uh, the online participants, participants from other webinars, um, you know, as well as the general community of, of authors. Um, you know, I think that in addition to what uh, we've been talking about on today's webinar, um, so many of these topics are urgent, as many of us have said, and need to be addressed um, as far as formal and informal and you know, general life-wide learning goes. Um, so I would just encourage not just all of us, but anyone listening and, and viewing um, the recording in the future to join this community. And I would encourage you, Renata, to, um, and you probably have already done this, um, to figure out some way to keep this community going. And it would be great, um, per speaking personally, to be part of that. Nice. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, Carl? You're muted. Yeah, you yeah I'm sorry. I, ask your question again. I missed it. I just wrap with closing statements about the series uh, as well as uh, kind of uh, the next step to rate. Sure. So most I'm just I'm glad that I was invited to participate and I think that we're we've got a lot of exciting things going on in data science education the fall was really busy for all kinds of things and um, I hope everyone stays up to date on what's going on um, I look forward to seeing how as data science and the hubs all start interacting we sort of see this environment evolve and I want to remind everyone that we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time we need to teach a new class or develop something new, that sharing resources is a great way to get everyone moving farther, faster. Thank you. Uh, Boots? Oh, did you, did you see me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, OK. Um, I just want to add my congratulations for an outstanding series and for a really good effort and also to support the concept that we don't need to be reinventing and doing things over and over again. There are a lot of wonderful things happening. Um, and I hope we can build on each other's work and cooperate and collaborate to do the best possible kinds of things. There certainly is still room for a lot of work. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to have a chance to be part of it. Um, but this idea of communication, of being aware of what other people are doing and being part of a larger community is just incredibly valuable. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? Hi, everybody. Uh, so um, uh, one of my thoughts is that we all now across uh, the, the webinar team, the authors, the group that came to the workshop, and now audience folks, we have an opportunity, I think, to also help facilitate that reduction of, of uh, reinventing the wheel by um, making sure that the kinds of reports we've heard about, the activities happening, get communicated to professional societies, um, as, well as, as well as other organizations that, uh, A, might have resources that they can help contribute toward furthering our, our uh, activities, uh, um, but also because there are lots of professional societies that are very deeply interested in finding solutions to some of these things, um, and they don't have to start from scratch. So I just want to I just want to put that out there and say again, it's been a real honor to participate in this. And if I can be of any help, um, of course, people are welcome to reach out to the Midwest Big Data Hub. But you can also contact me directly, uh, and that's easy to find on the website. Uh, and finally, we. Look forward to uh, building new collaborations around this virtual center for uh, for data science resources, uh, and that that'll be open to everybody. And so we look forward to having everybody participate in uh, contributing to that or participating in leadership as well. Thank you.
Thank you. Nick? Yeah, so thanks again for what I thought was a great uh, webinar that complemented the report. There are a lot of things in the report we haven't talked about as much today, but that's why they're there in the report, thinking about ethics, diversity and inclusion, some more with the two-year colleges. But I'm excited by the establishment of the network and these, these next steps, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Yuri? Okay, uh, I will do that very quickly, but I see the benefits of establishing more regular cooperation and also uh, uh, this between the United States and Europe initiative. Uh, Edison is not, not li only one initiative that's related to data science or data uh, technologies. Uh, so this is also initiative that goes, is a fair initiative that's very popular between uh, research organization and uh, uh, and industry uh, and also uh, research data alliance is very active at, in europe in this international organization so there are, should be a couple of meetings there people can meet discuss and surely online uh, communication and forums and webinars are would be quite useful forum is would be also big facilita facilitator for this yeah. Well, thank you all. So it sounds like there's a lot. There's a lot of work still to be done, and hopefully we'll see uh, again. Uh, I said the the webinar, the report is uh, posted. All of the webinars will be available on the South Hub YouTube channel. The report is up now on South Media Hub, or SouthBigDataHub.org, um, as well as the program announcement. Uh, and we'll take some time in getting the links and kind of coordinating those together uh, so that those can also be made available to the community as kind of the beginning step uh, for this uh, idea of a forum. So I'd like to thank all of you and uh, thank all of those who have watched and will watch in the future. Um, and you know, keeping data science broad is definitely something that we all need to do together. So thank you.